Diane Abbott, trailblazer, as she is described essentially in every single interview regarding this subject. The first black woman MP in this country. Continually maligned, the person who receives more abuse online than all other MPs combined. Which is a fun fact about the world that Diane Abbott inhabits. Somebody who was a little bit gaff prone, who I've been very critical of previously. One thing I was critical of was the letter that she wrote to the Observer, which led to her suspension from the Parliamentary Labour Party and the removal of the whip or the suspension of the whip pending an investigation. Pending an investigation, this independent investigation, which of course actually, as has been pointed out in chat, isn't actually independent. That's for members. The NEC decides whip issues, right? So when it came to a disciplinary process for this letter that she wrote, which made some pretty slapdash comparisons between certain groups based upon colorism and racism, that I'm not going to relitigate for you right now. I've said my piece on this already. But broadly, I think she's been treated horribly, and she has been sitting there as an independent in the Commons with the whip suspended for months and months and months and months and months. And months. Now what's happened today is a bombshell. A bombshell has been dropped about just how corrupt, just how unscrupulous, just how ridiculous the internal Labour Party politics is and how monumentally terribly and awfully she's been treated by the Labour leadership. She's been treated absolutely horrendously. And here's the proof. Here's the proof. Whilst clearly she'd been left in limbo for a very, very long time about this, she wasn't left in limbo in terms of the decision that was made by the NEC, who are the people who are actually supposed to decide these things. Labour's investigation investigation into suspended MP Diane Abbott's racism comments finished five months ago. Five months ago this finished while she's been sitting around in limbo. A source says she was given a formal warning in December of 2023. She was required to do an online anti-Semitism course, which she did in February. She said she wouldn't do originally, but she then went and did it. And what's happened is she's been given a formal warning. That's it. Formal warning. No other problem in terms of whether or not she should be a member of the party, for example, whether she should still have the whip suspended, which is, again is at the behest of Sir Keith himself. It's not an independent process because that's just for memberships rather than whether or not you have the whip, the election. And she still, still does not know whether or not she'll be able to stand as the Labour candidate in Hackney on July the 4th. The election has already been called. She's been waiting for five months since the decision on this was made and she was given an official warning, but it wasn't actually offered any actually real sanctions. She still doesn't know after five months whether or not she is going to be the candidate for the seat that she's held for decades and decades and decades as the trailblazer quote unquote that she is. How utterly corrupt and monstrous the internal processes are in the Labour Party that will treat such an important MP as Dan Abbott like this. Again, I am full of criticism for her. I do not think she's perfect. Far from it. And I think that her career in politics is one of being a little bit gaff prone, somebody who needs to think before they speak more often and who has made more than one clumsy comment in the past. But none of that precludes her from being an important member of parliament and somebody whose politics I greatly respect in terms of how she approaches social justice and socialism as a political party candidate. And the fact that she's still waiting for a ruling on whether or not that she can stand as a candidate in the next election is ridiculous. This is absolutely shameful. But of course, she's a member of the Labour left. She's a leftist, she's a socialist, and therefore she is persona non grata in our political sphere and nobody cares. Nobody does care about it. In fact, Victoria Darby, who I've praised in the past, is one of the only people who seems to want to report on this stuff and care about her. People in question, the Question Time audience, they'll ask about Diane Abbott, for example. We'll press them on what's happening with the Diane Abbott whip problem. Now, in terms of internal Labour Party politics, the right winger in control, she gets treated like shit and she has basically no recourse because they control all the levers of power internally within the party. At the same time, when, as has been pointed out by JDM, when we already have a bunch of problems about how people of colour are being treated by the Labour Party leadership more broadly. This was outlined in the Ford report and he said that he hadn't even heard back from him about his recommendations around the hierarchy of racism within the party. And the fact that she's still being treated like this is beyond, beneath contempt. It's ter absolutely terrible. She understands the veteran MP is angry, depressed and worn out by the way she's being treated by Labour and as well she should be because she has been treated appallingly, absolutely appallingly. What Labour is trying to do is leave it too late for her to run to apply as an independent. It's obvious, isn't it? Exactly. Running down the clock, they tell her no, she can't run as independent. They get to appoint some Labour to win, Labour right lackey into her position in a very, very safe seat. That's the point. That's the point. And Owen Jones made a really good point about this as well. Keir Starmer has repeatedly told the public the investigation into Dabin is 
ongoing so he can't get involved. That turns out to be yet another lie. Meanwhile, his allies have been protected for behaviour ranging from racism to sexual harassment. Exactly, readmitting people like Neil Coyle, for example, and Rupert Huck, for example, with no actual real kind of punishment, especially for Neil Coyle considering the kind of things that he did. No problem. No problem letting Angela Smith back into the party despite her working for a, a private water company, for example. On top of that, and as has been pointed out again by Jones, to be clear, this means that the decision about Diane Abbott's future rested with the Chief Whip, who reports directly to Keir Starmer. Starmer knows this. He chose to lie to the public over and over and over again about the investigation being ongoing. This man incessantly lies. He is apparently addicted to dishonesty, which is true. The man is a craven, craven serial liar. Constant liar. He can't get away with lying. He is intentionally, intentionally dishonest. And he gets away with it because no one ever questions it. Like even the Victoria Derbyshire tweet, one of the only pieces of actual journalism being done about this, she doesn't even mention the fact that what this is is a clear, a clear lie in how Keir Starmer has presented this issue to the public when questioned about it. Utterly craven, craven behaviour from a profligate party that's facing zero scrutiny. Read this conversation in light of the facts. Absolutely shameless stuff. Keir Starmer approached an abbot in a conversation overheard went like this. Let me know if there's anything I can do. You could restore the whip. Which again, is down to him and the chief whip. I understand, just let me know if there's anything that you can do. Restore the whip, I understand. Literally, literally. That's the point. And again, he still lied about the, the reality of the situation behind this. Again, a party that is okay to welcome Christian Wakeford, to welcome Dan Poulter, to welcome Natalie Elphick, has been pointed out in chat, will treat its own, its own long-serving people who are constantly the victims of racist and misogynist abuse constantly will treat them worse than conservative defectors who stand against everything Labour purport to believe in. It's shameless, it's absolutely shameless and shameful. And here is what Andrew Fisher, somebody who I greatly respect, said on the subject in LBC today. You're going to come on TV and claim it's an independent process, I've got nothing to do with it. Mm, sure. This is in the hands of the Chief Whip, who's appointed by Keir Starmer. They meet weekly, at least often daily, to discuss issues. The idea that this hasn't been discussed with Keir Starmer and this decision doesn't rest ultimately with him because if the chief whip does something he doesn't like, he's out of the job or she's out of the job, whoever it may be at the time. So this is, you know, it's the dishonesty here, not the fact that there's factionalism within the Labour Party. As you and I know well, that exists. You know, I've yeah. been through a suspension myself um, back in 2015 uh, and was reinstated. But look, you know, we are where we are. Diane Abbott has been a lifelong member of the party an MP for 37 years, not just an MP, but the first black woman MP, one of the most prominent black people in this country, frankly, and to be treated like dirt by the Labour Party that she's given her life to, whether you agree with her politics or every statement she's ever made or not, is irrelevant. It's just despicable, really. And actually, whether she decides, you know, she wants to stand at the next election, whether she chooses, you know, hopefully she'll be allowed to stand as a Labour MP if that's what she wants, or a Labour candidate, rather. But, you know, the way she's been treated is appalling. Would, would you uh, like to see her, I mean, if she isn't allowed, do you think she should stand as an independent, as Jeremy Corbyn uh, has done? Look, I, I wouldn't want to see her. As I said, I want to see her as a Labour candidate. But look, that would be a decision for her, for her constituents. And we shouldn't forget, her CLP reselected her as a candidate in August 2022. The members in... And again, like, the CLPs keep getting overruled. The CLP and Islington North absolutely wanted Jeremy Corbyn, and they've had a private healthcare CEO foisted upon them. Again, as Becca points out in chat rightly, Keir Starmer has stolen the Labour Party through lies, through deception, through continual and serial lies. It's shameful. It's despicable, as Andrew rightly points out, as he rightly, rightly points out on top of all of this. Isn't lying to the public meant to be a resigning matter according to the Nolan principles of public life? Well, not necessarily because people don't seem to care about these kind of principles anymore. And on top of that, right? On top of that, nobody cares if Kirsten lies, especially if it's not to the left. Again, people who are not legitimate political actors in the eyes of our media class and our broader political discourse, right? The sensible centrists believe them to be not the adults in the room. So they get to be treated like dirt. They get to be treated like persona non grata. They get to be con constantly sidelined and not allowed to have access to the same proper channels of remuneration as everybody else does. And of course, on top of that, the genuine hypocrisy of these liberals.
who will look at this and say, oh, well, actually, no, he has to say these things because we need to get into power. All of these people who say, well, it was it was justified to be a little bit footballified, a little bit deceitful because, you know, the, the ends justify the means of getting into power. When if Boris Johnson was doing this stuff, oh, no, it was the end of the world. Oh, no, Boris Johnson lies. This is the end of democracy. This is him, you know, completely undermining the public office he holds. He demeans his public office by telling such obvious and brazen lies, both in the chamber and outside of the chamber. Of course, Keir Starmer is far more choosy with his words when he's inside the chamber because he knows the difference between what happens inside and outside of the chamber. But they don't care when it's Keir Starmer because they are happy to lay waste to their principles as long as it's their team. If it's their guy, then they're fine with lying. So when the other team does it, it's bad. At no point did they ever consider that, you know, maybe the people on the right wing believe themselves to be right. They believe they have the correct ideology. They believe they're fighting for the greater good. And when like, Boris Johnson lies, they think, well, he's not demanding his public office. He's just doing what's necessary because the ends justify the means. And of course, when everybody believes in every political circle that their side is the correct one to justify lying to advance their cause, that means everybody lies and we end up not being able to trust our political system and we end up with the absolute mess that we're in right now where everybody lies, no one is liked, our political system has no buy-in from our population and people are constantly showing support for the end of democracy and authoritarianism because of course they would. all of our politicians are completely deceitful, untrustworthy, li untrustworthy liars. But at least us here on the left have politicians that we know are truthful that we're happy to support and call both sides out for lying. But both the left and the right, the liberals, sorry, and the right seem to be very very fine with scrutinizing liars on the other team whilst absolving their own because they're hypocrites they don't want an, uh, a heightened political discourse they don't think that demeaning public office is a problem they just want political weapons to attack their opponents with it's cynical politics it's cynical politics from cynical people i'm sick of it i'm sick of these people honestly because this is where we've ended up a toxic a destroyed political discourse in this country that is basically unsalvageable at this point and you know what the victims of this are the people who genuinely want real political change which is us here on the left who hold principles and stick to them but you know maybe that's just student politics to have principles it's the politics of protest and not power you're just an activist with your principles and your values and your ethical beliefs it's just honestly honestly and i really do hope that diane abba you know really properly pushes this line because you can't just get away with blatant lies not just like little white lies or deceptions or distortions of reality or whatever or you know being economical with the truth quote unquote direct and explicit lies ask the direct question what is happening about diane abbott's suspension it is a matter not for me it is explicitly matter for him his whip that he's appointed is the one who's not made the decision therefore it is in his hands and nothing has happened about it this is a complete and obvious lie but no i guess it's not an issue chat just as i was editing this particular segment it has been released by the times that she will indeed be blocked from standing as a candidate at the next election which is of course completely shameful and as we mentioned in the segment what i predicted it was clearly a cynical move to drag out the process to make it as hard as possible for her to stand as an independent against labor shameful despicable disgusting behavior by a craven labor party that's high on its own supply and is not being held accountable for anything don't vote labor vote green vote socialist independent do whatever you can but do not vote for the labor party they do not deserve your vote anyway hey, if you enjoyed the video make sure that you like and leave a comment that helps the video out in the algorithm if you subscribe and ring the bell it'll let you know when i go live i stream every day on youtube and twitch you can also follow all of my socials down in the description and if you want to support me in a more financial manner there's a join button for membership to just 99p to be a member on youtube as well as a patron and there's some merch there as well and hopefully i'll catch you on the next video take care